Hi everyone, it's Aline here. Here's a very silly example that I hope will help you better understand how interaction variables work. What we have is our random locations here, corner store, vending machine, or Vegas, for where we buy our bottles of water. What I've also given you here is the total price, as well as the quantity of bottles ordered. And my question to you is, if you were given this information, would you be able to work backwards to figure out the individual prices, depending on where you bought the bottles of water? Well, let's give this a try. We need to first of all create our location variables, and those are going to be dummy variables. We have three locations, corner store, vending machine, and Vegas. So let's create a dummy variable for corner store and vending machine, and we'll leave Vegas as our reference category. It doesn't really matter what you do, but we'll just pick something. Okay, so location equals corner store, and location equals vending machine. Okay, so equals if a2 is equal to vending machine, then 1, otherwise 0. And copy those all the way down. That's a quick trick as well, by the way. Your total um, dummy variables should always total to 1, because only one of them could ever be equal to 1. Okay, so we've created our dummy variables for our location equals corner store and our location equals vending machine. We also need to create two interaction variables. Our first interaction variable is the interaction between corner store and quantity. And the way we're going to do that is multiply our dummy variable for corner store by quantity. We also need to create another interaction here for location equals vending machine and quantity. and we'll multiply those together. So vending machine times quantity. Okay, and let's see what happens here if we run some very basic regression. First without any interaction variables and then with. So data, data analysis, regression, say okay. Our Y range in this case is going to be our total price. Our X range in this case is going to be our quantity. Include your labels and say OK. And we can see that our R squared isn't very good. In fact, it's only 22.6%. And we're only really explaining 22.6% of the change in price as a result of the change in quantity because we know something else is going on in the background and that the cost of a bottle of water differs between location so it's not just how many you order, but also where you order them. If now what I did is I ran a regression, and in this version of the regression I looked at the total so and in this version of the regression I looked at total price, but I included quantity, location equals vending machine, and location equals corner store. So let's move this, let's highlight it, put my mouse over the edge, hold shift, and drag this over here. So data, data analysis regression, and now my Y range still is going to be my total price. My X range is going to be these three variables together. Again, we choose labels and we say OK. And again, we can see that my R squared has now really improved up to 79.8%. But again, it's not perfect. And if we're talking about the number of units we order and the price we pay, this should be a perfect R squared. So we can do one better. Let's go back to our original data set. And now we'll include all of these things together as they affect total price. And let's see what happens with our regression now. Data, data analysis, regression, and say OK. My Y range remains total price, but now my X range will be all of these things together. Again, include your labels and say OK. And now let's take a look at our output. Now for all intents and purposes, something times 10 to the minus 13 or 10 to the minus 14, we can just call those zero for now because effectively they are zero. And what we have is our quantity at $9, our interaction at minus eight, and then our interaction for vending times quantity is minus 7.5. 
Let's see if we can interpret what all of this means. I do want you to notice here that my r squared is equal to 1.00. So we have identified a perfect linear regression here that perfectly explains the amount that we're going to have to pay. If we were in Vegas, here's the equation of the line. Our total price is equal to, okay, let's go down the list here. We've got our coefficient of nine times quantity, so nine times whatever quantity we order, plus minus eight times the interaction between corner store and quantity. Okay, well, we're not in a corner store, so we're gonna say zero for that times quantity plus minus 7.5 times zero times quantity. And what this breaks out to is then total price is equal to nine times quantity. And what that's telling me is that it costs $9 per bottle of water in Vegas. At a vending machine, here's what we get. Total price is equal to nine times quantity plus minus eight times zero times quantity because we're not at a vending machine in that second item here, right? This is for corner store. And then for vending machines, we're at minus 7.5. So let's see, we let's add that term. And then vending machines, we're at minus 7.5. So let's add that term times minus 7.5 times one this time, times quantity. And what that leaves us with is total price is equal to nine times quantity minus 7.5 times quantity, which again reduces to total price is equal to 1.5 times quantity. So it costs $1.50 to buy a bottle of water from the vending machine. And finally at our corner store, we can sub in again, total price is equal to, and now we can just see it, 9 times quantity plus minus eight times one times quantity plus, and I'll just say zero here. You can see that if we sub zero into the minus 7.5 times zero times quantity, that term will drop out. And all we're left with here is my total price is equal to one times quantity, and it cost me a dollar at the corner store. So again, this is a very simple example of an interaction. But what I like about it is you get an R squared of one. I think it's fairly intuitive to see how these then explain what an interaction is actually doing. The quantity itself is certainly affecting how much we're going to have to pay, but it's the interaction between quantity and location that really then tells us how much it is we're going to have to pay, specifically.